So I've got my 108 mounting box. Um, I like these boxes, they've got these little membranes in them. They're soft membranes. And the idea is that if you squeeze through the membrane, you maintain the IP rating of IP66. You can't use stuffing glands on these boxes. They wouldn't actually fit. I believe the whole size on these is 16 mil. You could get 16 mil glands, uh, but you wouldn't get lock rings in there. There's been a lot of criticism about people not using glands on 308 boxes. You don't have to. Let me just be clear, sorry, I, I know I'm like kind of like out of shot. Um, I've just got the camera kind of mounted on the wall. Yeah, you don't have to use glands on these boxes, especially not for extra low voltage stuff. Um, and providing you do some strain relief, you'll be fine. So we're gonna run through that now. First thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna mount the box to a whisker spike. Now, I make these spikes. I prefer the horizontal mount, which is this, so the box will sit flat. Oh, you can't see that. <laughs> the box will sit flat like that in the ground. Um, you, there's one where, well, there's two actually, where the box actually sits on its side. Um, but I mean, there's a fence panel behind where the camera is anyway, so if I wanted it to mount it to the wall, I could just mount it to the wall. I'm going to use a whisker spike though in this case. If anything, as product demo. So, on a 108 box, you have to, I've just dropped the screw, push through the two little side holes here and here. Um, these side holes, by the time the lid actually goes on, they're actually not part of the box. They're, well, not part of the um, IP66 portion, which is kind of useful, really. But when you push the screw through anyway, it still pushes for a mem soft membrane anyhow. So you're pretty well covered either way. So I'm gonna push my screws through. This is, uh, quite, I'm a fan of the 108 boxes. I mean, I like a 308 box, but um, you know, where you can get a smaller box in a planter, it makes much more sense. And of course there's that new 208 box as well. And they're good. Although, I haven't bought any for this project. Because um, when I was looking for the boxes, they're quite pricey. I don't know why. Whereas the 108s are cheap. Cheaper. Not cheap. Right, so I'm at my spike. But I won't spike it in. Because if I spike it in now, by the time I've connected all my cables, it moves around so much, it won't be secure anymore. Um, I'm putting the box in by the side of where the camera is. So what I'm doing is I'm just prepping the cable in so that it is the same length going to the box. Now this cable's already going that way anyway, so this one's gonna be a lot shorter. Normally I'd use some lazy strippers to strip all this, but I don't have any. So I'm just gonna literally use the old Stanley knife method. Which is probably painful for some of you to watch. And then some croppers to kind of like pull off the last bit. There we go. Have to be a little bit more careful with the flex because it's quite easy to go through. Now you notice that all manufacturers use a rubber flex for their lights, even if those lights are mains. Now, for mains, I feel like that's quite crazy, really. Because this stuff is so soft. It wouldn't take a lot to go through. I mean, I could probably bite my way through it. I mean, if extra low voltage, it's fine. If you go through it, the light's just gonna stop working. It's not gonna hurt anyone, though. And that's the point. Okay, so on a 108 box, all we need to do is just basically, I like, I like to just pop the holes out with my screwdriver. Someone might have a better method. That's the one I use. Feed my cables in. Lots of bees about. 
It's nice. So, that's our cables through into our box. So what I need to do now is provide strain relief because at the moment, if anyone pulls on this, it's just gonna pull straight out. So I'm gonna go get some cable ties and I'll show you what I do with those. Okay. <clears throat> So what I do is loop them around the outer sheath. I tighten them up as sort of tight as they'll go hand tight, but if you've got a talking tool or something, that'd probably be better to use that. But the idea now is that if, if someone pulls on this cable, look, it stops. Stops it from pulling out. So there's a little tip there. Because these are wired in series, what we need to do is wire, so this is, black is the positive on this pair, it's going to go into the red at the, the nearest light, which is also the positive. Out of the negative of that light, it's going to feed into the positive of the next one. It's not like you do conventional wiring when you're doing wiring stuff in series. It's a little bit different and if you do it wrong, um, well, with my lights, it will just put a heavy strain on the driver. With some other makes, uh, you'll blow up the lights. So you need to be wired up correctly. Um, and I will just quickly show you what that looks like. So, the black there is the positive, okay? So that's going from, so it's going feeding into the red positive of the nearest light. Out of that light is feeding the negative, sorry, the negative from that light, sorry, is then feeding the positive of the light after. So it's going in, out, in, out, and then back again, all the way back to the control. And that's all we need to do. And we just neatly fold all that stuff inside the box, pop the lid back on, We go and we're away no whisker gel needed because these are extra low voltage connections they don't need if this box got water in it, it would not matter at all it would carry on working so i'm just going to pop that down by the side of the camera i'll take a photo or a video 